controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you got to do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power. Humanity has the power. We have the power. Do you want to fight? You better believe you got one. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. As for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, July 12th, 2013, and our big story tonight is... Big Sis is leaving Homeland Security in Washington. Unfortunately, she's leaving the Department of Homeland Security behind in Washington to harass the rest of us. And she's actually proud of her legacy. She wrote with a straight face, and we're covering this in uh, InfoWars, Big Sis to resign from Department of Homeland Security. She says, we've worked together to minimize threats of all kinds to the American public. The department has improved the safety of travelers, you know, the TSA and how effective they are implemented smart steps that make our immigration system more fair and focused while deploying record resources to protect our nation's border. And we know how secure the nation's border is. Worked with states to build resiliency and make our nation's emergency disaster response capabilities more bust, you know, like Hurricane Sandy, and partnered with the private sector to improve our cybersecurity. That's one area where they actually have done what she says. They've created a fascist partnership with corporations to spy on every aspect of our life. And as the article goes on to state, it says, Napolitano also oversaw the See Something, Say Something campaign that resembles the worst <clears throat> of Stasi East Germany and its pervasive police state. If you might remember, just a couple of nights ago, we had a story of a uh, light artist in Berlin who actually shined a great big sign on the side of the American Embassy in Berlin that said, United Stasi of America. Everybody knows what the government has turned into under the direction of Homeland Security, and Janet Napolitano has been a big part of that. Now, where is she going? She's actually going to the University of California system, where she will oversee the entire system, you know, where they pepper spray students who are peacefully demonstrating. I'm sure that was an incentive for her. And it's interesting to note that here we are about a decade, a little over a decade after the creation of Homeland Security, and it is now a degree program, a major, for most of the universities that have law enforcement programs. So this is a very big business, and the universities are where you want to go if you want to capture people's hearts and minds to essentially use mind control. As we pointed out when we talked about the new documentary that InfoWars is selling, Mind Control, it is a case that it's not just what we typically think of with like MK Ultra, but the broader, more subtle areas of mind control where you really control the general public through the media, through academia, through the educational system. That is really where the documentary starts and builds on that. Of course, it talks about the more obvious types of mind control, but it's, it's really the educational system. And so it's a perfect place for someone who has spent their life in Homeland Security to go to. But the real legacy, the real issue, probably why Janet Napolitano is leaving and she doesn't want to talk about it, are the multiple reported lawsuits going on accusing lesbian political appointees of harassing male heterosexuals who actually have law enforcement experience, whereas most of these political appointees were at most lawyers like Janet Napolitano before she went to Homeland Security. Now. Speaking of the Stasi, speaking of East Germany and the tactics that our government is using, it was just a few days ago that the Obama administration sent out a memo to federal employees to really scrutinize each other, pay close attention to personal habits and uh, everything that your other employees are doing, so you can report that to Big Sis or to the government. <clears throat> now World Net Daily, WND reports, in an article, Spy versus Spy, feds now want reports from retailers. That's right. A video which appeared Thursday on YouTube carries a message that terrorists are just around the corner. 
And all Americans need to keep an eye on their friends, their family, and their neighbors, just like federal employees need to spy on their coworkers. Those who are in retail, it says, are specifically positioned to derail terror plans. The video, which is prepared by the FBI, suggests a customer is suspicious if he's vague about the use of his purchase. So we should explain that to all the retailers. Or if there's unusual preoccupation with a product's chemical composition, yeah, don't look for any GMO. Or the customer is new or unknown, or the buyer is unwilling to provide ID. We need to provide ID now when we buy things at retail. Or, even worse, if you're paying in cash uh, for the purchase of unusual quantities or something that's out of season. You know, we don't want to get snow blowers in the summer when we can get them at a discount, right? That might be suspicious. Uh, we might get reported as being terrorists. And it's not, just, uh, it's not just retailers, it's not just the federal government. We have people creating smart apps that encourage everyone in society to become informants and to spy on each other, especially gun owners. Watch out, America. The Snoop Society has a new gun-grabbing tool. This one is an app that hopes to crowdsource your busybody neighbors and build a de facto gun registry. Gun Geomarker is a new tattle app for Android that allows users to flag any sites with a dangerous gun and its owner. In complete defiance of the Second Amendment, the app suggests marking the locations of any unlocked, loaded, or carelessly stored weapons. Are you a first-time gun owner or someone who hasn't yet taken the basic gun safety training? Well, Gun Geomarker considers you a real and present danger to the community, and your location will be marked right away. But wait, you're not a bad guy, but a well-meaning person who probably just bought your gun out of fear or lack of a sense of personal strength. Well, the app suggests its users confront and educate you on gun safety before flagging your house. However, if you are unable to recite these four basic rules, or even if you just become angry with your neighbor for asking you to do this task, well, the gun geomarker says they better mark your house ASAP. People who stockpile large arsenals or numerous assault weapons are likely a concern. Now, just having an NRA bumper sticker or other public displays supporting gun ownership aren't a big deal. But the app says when combined with radical anti-government propaganda, like that Ron Paul bumper sticker or flying a don't tread on me flag outside your home, well, these owners and their locations may well be worth flagging as a warning to others. The app also wants you to provide clear reasons why you may be concerned about the mental health of a gun-owning individual. So not only is the citizen Gestapo telling the world where you keep your guns, but they're also letting them know the state of your mental health, or really actually it's their opinion on the state of your mental health. Okay, so the app developer just wants to protect the kids around unlocked guns and label homes where dangerous criminals live, right? False. Although the app promises user anonymity, it suggests that if you're dealing with a really dangerous neighbor or a home you're certain is involved in organized crime, you should just tell the authorities rather than marking the home. Proving once again, it's not criminals who will be affected by a gun registry, but law-abiding citizens. In fact, those criminals might even actually benefit from the app by knowing exactly which house is to rob when it's time to restock their gun cash. But wait, it's an anonymous app, so what gives? Well, the gun geo marker only allows you to tag a site at which you are physically present. So you must feel comfortable standing there in front of the home for up to a minute while the geo tag registers, without fear of being spotted and then probably shot at by your gangster, gun-toting neighbor. Another flaw with the app, there is no opt-out option or way to challenge an erroneous marking. Although the developer raises the important issue of unsupervised children around unlocked guns, the app's purpose is clearly stated on the website. If enough members of your community take the time to mark dangerous gun sites and owners, then this crowdsourced data may serve to save a life, or perhaps even influence national policy. Sorry, but I don't think flagging 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is going to do anything to change the policy of those with malicious intent. To learn more about the bottom line issue of gun control and the leaders who've embraced it, visit the InfoWars store and pick up a copy of The Magic of Gun Control by Sheriff Mack. For the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, in our surveillance state, it's not just the federal government who is spying on you. It's not just retailers who are being encouraged to spy on you. And it's not even people who are being encouraged to report on their neighbors 
being gun owners. It's also now your appliances. Things in your house are turning into items of espionage. Kurt Nemo has an article on InfoWars. Microsoft's smart cities are an ideal template for the Stasi police state. If City Next, that's the name of their project, succeeds, cities will improve efficiency by installing Microsoft products that harness the cloud and big data. Remember, big data was what they talked about at Bilderberg this year, writes Michael Endler for Information Week. <clears throat> so called smart cities, as designed by corporations like IBM and Cisco, will utilize the Internet of Things, it's also got an I acronym IOT, a system of objects networked with RFID, the re end result being a, quote, world where every object, from jumbo jets to sewing needles, is linked to the Internet. As Helen Deuce, the RFID Technology Auto ID European Center at the University of Cambridge, envisions that Microsoft, as, as Kurt Nemo points out, you might recall, as a great and long-standing relationship with government law enforcement, even intelligence agencies, in the form of helping to fund fusion centers, as well as providing fusion center technology. And it's not just InfoWars pointing that out. That's a quote from Network World. And if you remember, when the slides about the PRISM program were released, of course, Microsoft was the very first company to join in that bit of espionage turning over all of your electronic information, everything on the cloud, everything on big data, turning that over to the NSA and the CIA to spy on you. Well, actually, Yahoo was one of the companies there. And unlike the other companies who denied, had very carefully worded denials saying that they did not hand over any customer information to the NSA, Yahoo is now trying in court to get their name cleared. Yahoo wants FISA objections to be revealed, reports The Guardian. Yahoo has called on FISA, the secret U.S. surveillance court, to let it publish its legal argument against a case that gave the government, quote, powerful leverage, see that powerful leverage, in persuading tech companies to cooperate with controversial data gathering program. Quote from Yahoo, release of this court's decision and the party's briefing is necessary to inform the growing public debate about how this court, the secretive FISA court, considers and examines the government's use of directives, Yahoo said in a filing to the FISA court, which rules on surveillance orders sought by the federal government. And they go on to say, courts have long recognized the public has a right to access court records. Disclosure of the directives and the briefs in this case would also allow Yahoo to demonstrate that it objected strenuously to the directives that are now the subject of debate and objected at every stage of the proceedings, but that these objections were overruled and its request for stay was denied, said Yahoo. <clears throat> now what Yahoo is doing is they're pointing out, unlike the other companies that were part of the prison program, that they strenuously objected, that they were basically being forced to participate. And how were they being forced to participate? By the proceedings of a secretive court Understand that the FISA court is not only secretive, but there is no opposition. Typically in a court that you think of, there is someone arguing on one, each side of the issue, someone in a defense position, and yet that doesn't happen in the FISA courts. They make their ruling with just a single judge, no jury, no defense attorney, no one arguing the other side. And those decisions that they make are classified. They're secret. We're not allowed to see them. That's what this lawsuit is about from Yahoo. Furthermore, they maintain the legal fiction that these secretive rulings by a single judge have an effect of a Supreme Court ruling, which they believe, I believe erroneously, and we all know that the Supreme Court does not modify the Constitution, but they're saying that they believe that just like the Supreme Court that they believe modifies the Constitution with their rulings, they say that FISA has constitutional implications and sets precedents, even though these rulings are secretive and there's no jury, there's no argument for the other side. So basically they go in and have a star chamber hearing, create a ruling that is secretive, and then say, this supersedes our Constitution and our written public law. That's the way our government operates now. Well, Washington is being vilified in Egypt by both sides of the debate. This article from the Chicago Tribune has a great photo in it. It actually uh, shows people holding up a sign that says, Obama is supporting terrorism. It says, no matter which side you talk to in Egypt, 
where people have been polarized by a violent political cross crisis, the U.S. president is cast as the villain. Somebody should tell that to Rachel Maddow. Maybe she should interview some people in Egypt. Because she doesn't believe that our government is behind terrorism. She doesn't believe that we fund terrorists like Al-Qaeda. And in reality, we're probably funding both sides. We fund not only the terrorist rebels, but we also fund the dictators and the military coup. And uh, that's being done illegally. It's actually blowback. This is what Ron Paul talks about so much, blowback, creating animosity on both sides of the issue. We have to get involved in every conflict, typically supporting both sides, both criminals, because that makes the most money for the military-industrial complex. But it's not just that we get blowback. It's not just that we make enemies of people, but it's actually something that is being done by design, as I said, so that the military-industrial complex can sell the most amount of weapons. Now, the journalistic practices of the Washington Post and Walter Pincus are being called into question by an article on The Guardian written by Glenn Greenwald. Now, this is pretty amazing because in this article, uh, and, and what's interesting about this, it just shows just how corrupt the mainstream media is. It shows how they manipulate public opinion because the person who wrote these opinion pieces attacking Glenn Greenwald in the Washington Post is actually Walter Pincus. Who is Walter Pincus? Well, Walter Pincus is the national security reporter for the Washington Post. That's his specialty. And, of course, he has a lot of experience in that. This is a man who was a uh, in COINTEL in the Army. He also wrote uh, How I Traveled Abroad on CIA Subsidy, where he recounts how he spied on American students abroad for the U.S. government. And then he went to work for the Washington Post, mainstream media, promoting the government's narrative. And now he is attacking Glenn Greenwald. We've seen a lot of attacks on Glenn Greenwald in the press as well as in the government calling for him to be arrested, accusing him of, of uh, treason. And in this particular case, I'll let Greenwald, uh, I'll quote from his article here, he says, the article concocted a frenzied and inane conspiracy theory. There we go, conspiracy theory. That it was WikiLeaks and Julian Assange working in secret with myself and Laura Poitras who masterminded the Snowden leaks ahead of time and directed Snowden's behavior and then Assange. Rather than have WikiLeaks publish the documents itself, they generously directed them to The Guardian. To peddle this tale, Pincus, in lieu of any evidence, spouted all sorts of accusatory innuendo masquerading as questions. He said things like, did Edward Snowden decide on his own to seek out journalists and then a job at Booz Allen Hamilton's Hawaii facility? Did Assange and WikiLeaks personnel help or direct Snowden to those journalists? He's pointing out that the technique that he's using here <clears throat> is to basically raise questions without any supporting evidence. Now, InfoWars is accused all the time of being conspiracy theorists. And that word was, that phrase was first used to attack people who question the government's official story about the JFK assassination. You know, if you didn't believe the magic bullet or if you saw videos that uh, indicated that he was being shot from the front, you know, you were just a conspiracy theorist. Well, when we talk about things, we have to, that, are, that the mainstream media is not talking about, we know we're going to be ridiculed. So we carefully document what we report, unlike the tactics that the Washington Post uses. And what he says is that and part of the debate that is out right now as to what is journalism, you know, should journalists be licensed by the government? Should only journalists have freedom of speech? He said, they jump into this debate and they give us an example. They answer it this way. They say, what is journalism? Glenn Greenwald said, the Washington Post says, well, you fill up articles on topics you don't know the first thing about uh, with nothing but idle speculation and rank innuendo and evidence-free accusations all under the guise of, quote, just asking questions. And then he finishes up the last quote I'll read from him. He says, but shoddy journalism from the Washington Post is far too common to be worth noting. What was far worse was that Pincus's wild conspiracy theory, theorizing was accomplished only by asserting blatant, easily demonstrated falsehood. So he really takes that apart. It's a, it's a great article. And they took a very long time, very reluctantly, uh, doing retractions of the false statements that were put out there, as well as the slander and the innuendo against Glenn Greenwald. Uh, now, take a look at this next video. This is another example of what DARPA is working on. First, it starts out with uh, the, the uh, uh, Pet Man project, and now we've got this uh, 
robot, Atlas, that stands six foot two, is 330 pounds, possibly the most advanced humanoid robot ever built. And this is part of a contest that is being sponsored by DARPA. And if you want to know what they are going to use these robots for, what the military industrial complex and the police industrial complex is going to use these robots for, just take a look at the trailer for Elysium. This is what it's going to look like. Police robots questioning people and brutalizing them in ways that uh, we're seeing our human, robot, our human robots now in the police departments doing, but it'll be much easier to do that with real robots than it is with police, you know, because uh, the real robots aren't going to develop a conscience. And maybe the police that we've got won't develop it either. On a more positive note, we see some pushback from uh, the Tea Party on a petition to prosecute Eric Holder. And it's gotten over a million signatures. This is reported on InfoWars. Actually, Tea Party Net, the Tea Party dot net is the site where you can find this petition. A Tea Party group that launched a petition drive to prosecute U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder reported on its Facebook page that it has nearly a million signers and the movement is growing by the minute. This is a quote from the petition. A person is supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. That's not the case, however, in, the Obama, in, in Obama's America when he needs to manipulate the people for his own political expediency. Who can he always rely on to be his hatchet man? None other than Attorney General Eric Holder. Do you stand with us in calling for his resignation and prosecution? And nearly a million people have answered yes. And it's not just that pushback. But we also now have some of the people who are being victimized and having their freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. The First Amendment gives us freedom of religion. And some of the people who are being persecuted by the U.S. military are now working to get an amendment, a good amendment, put into the next NDAA. You know, we all talk about the NDAA. Nobody had ever heard of it until we had the section that takes in, has indefinite detention and warrantless, uh, trans, uh, warrantless trials for people. But uh, now we have uh, the Family Research Center, who has been the target of vilification from the Southern Poverty Law Center as well as the U.S. military. And they have a coalition of conservative leaders and congressmen who gathered on Capitol Hill July 9th to lend their support to an amendment offered in the National Defense Authorization Act that is designed to protect the religious freedoms of U.S. military personnel. That's right, you don't lose your First Amendment protections when you join the military. The effort was led by Family Research Council, which recently released a report documenting incidences of hostility towards religious expression in the military. And of course, the Family Research Center itself was attacked by a would-be gunman who fortunately was stopped by a security guard. The gunman pointed out that he was attacking them because he'd been told by the Southern Poverty Law Center that they were a hate group. And they've been told that now, they've been labeled that by Pentagon memos and uh, memos from people who were lieutenant colonels and uh, others, high-ranking officials. And in this article, it points out several different incidences where there's been persecution of Christians. In 2011, officials at the National Cemetery in Houston banned Christian prayers at funeral services for military personnel. Uh, there was an ethics course. It's been part of the training for nuclear missile officers at California's Vandenberg Air Force Base for 20 years that was pulled from the curriculum because it had Christian content. And in 2012, a Pennsylvania Army Reserve Equal Opportunity Training Brief on Extremism included evangelical Christianity and Catholicism as examples of religious extremism along with Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Islamophobia, and the Ku Klux Klan. That's what they're doing is they're trying to take mainstream Christians and mainstream Christian groups and link them with proven hate groups and front groups. Actually, the Ku Klux Klan is a front group for the uh, U.S. government now doing uh, COINTEL operations, but linking them with known real hate groups and just basically uh, guilt by association. As long as they can keep associating them with the Ku Klux Klan, eventually people are going to see them as the same as the Ku Klux Klan. Now, in a rare instance of candor, Wells Fargo has expressed the truth about fiat currency. Take a look at this sign that they have in the Wells Fargo banks. It actually points out that your money is going to be worth a lot less in the future. So invest it now. 
The problem is they're telling you to invest it in dollar-denominated investments. The cognitive dissonance about the dollar never fails to amaze me, it says on this InfoWars article. People know in their bones that their dollars will be worth a lot less in the future, yet they continue to trust and cling to the dollar as a store of values. Commodities like copper, with an industrial demand, may fall in price even drastically in the midst of a global depression, but the 30% or so drop in the price of something like copper will be running hard against the U.S. government's need to inflate away the value of the U.S. dollar by having the Fed create new money to buy up more and more government debt. That's right. You're going to need to have your money in something that is not a dollar-denominated fiat currency if you're worried about it, runaway inflation. Right now, for quite some time, the government has been engaged, the Federal Reserve has been engaged, not the government, but the private Federal Reserve has been engaged in a policy of quantitative easing. And they've created massive amounts of currency. That currency is still on deposit largely at the banks, where they are earning more money than they would if they lend it out. If interest rates go up and they start lending that money out, you can expect to see some massive inflation. So you might uh, want to invest your money in gold, or even in brass and lead, something that is going to retain its value. And besides investing in commodities, you might want to invest in helping to wake people up and inform them about the Federal Reserve and other issues that the mainstream press ignores. Now, you can get a membership, Prison Planet TV. Up to 10 other people can watch the news simultaneously. It's a great way to spread the information. It's a great way to inform people and to wake them up. Well, that's it for the news portion tonight. Uh, stay tuned right after the break. Alex Jones was a special guest this last weekend in Austin at an event held by Tex Mars, and we thought the speech was so good you would want to see it. So stay tuned right after the break. We've got that for you. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Are we choosing our own paths, our own destiny, or has it been pre-selected for us? C.S. Lewis said, when training beats education, civilization dies. We need to always be cognizant of, as a free society, that information can be used as a weapon. Barrier to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. We are seen as nothing but biological androids. To gain control of education in America, not for a philanthropic purpose, but to change the thinking of the American people. From the time we're very young, we're taught to, you know, worship authority basically because that's our key to survival as young children. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, we are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. And the CIA scientists could actually film people who had been surreptitiously dosed with LSD. There's a brain entrainment process that takes place. That gives the government free reign to create whatever story or narrative it wants to create. Whatever the public face of something is, whatever they're talking about publicly, there's something else over here they're probably not looking at. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would fully endorse, not only endorse, but demand a war. When you watch mainline establishment television, you are putting yourself in front of the barrel of a gun. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control, psychological warfare, brainwashing. Are we controlled and manipulated? You bet. That's mind control. Par excellence. Find out how deep the rabbit hole really goes with this new groundbreaking documentary film, State of Mind. Available exclusively at Infowars.com. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at Infowars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is, is an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious 
attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, and for the great tyranny and wickedness rising worldwide, I am the reaction, you are the reaction, we are the resistance to this tyranny. So today I just want to remember all of those that came before us across the continents of this world over thousands of years who stood up for the individual and who had uh, righteousness in their heart and who wanted to do good. Not that any of us are perfect, we're all desperately wicked in one way or another, but whose hearts are right and who wanted to build a better civilization and a better society. And all of you that are here today and all of you that are watching out there. In the final equation, you have decided which side you're on. And this whole life is very fleeting, very short, as Shakespeare said, out, out, brief candle. What matters is our souls. What matters is what side of history we're on. So I salute all of you that have chosen to be on the right side of history. 
salute the fighters against adversity who did the right thing and stood up and spoke out against the gangs of criminals and control freaks that have infested our civilization for thousands upon thousands of years. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that history, uh, really in broad strokes, because history is so, so complex. You can study one period of one nation's history and read a thousand books about it and get lost in all of the different personalities and things that happened at that time. But I wanted to go over some broad strokes to define what the Illuminati is and what their plan is for civilization, for society, for you and your family, versus the society and civilization that we can build if we simply put out those alternate ideas and run them up against the globalist. Instead of just falling down and acting like the world is theirs and that we're supposed to stand down. We are to occupy. We are to be the salt of the earth. And so again, I salute you for being here and all of you that are out there watching because you are the salt of the earth and the light out there against this darkness. Now, I want to be clear. Some people hear what I talk about and they say, this is scary. This guy's trying to scare us. And I realize that that is a blind spot that I've had. But that's not a crowd I'm really even trying to talk to, so it doesn't matter. I, when I see corruption, when I see thugs, when I see organized crime and government or corporations are on the streets, I want to organize good people against it. My very instinct is to stand against it, to try to wake up as many people as I possibly can. But for a lot of people who've been taught they have no power, they get really scared. And they think, man, hearing about this somehow is almost like conjuring it or manifesting it in the world. That's not how things really work, ladies and gentlemen. You can think of something, but then you've got to go out and take action to build it or do it. You just don't imagine it, and then it suddenly pops into view. Now, the globalists have their brainwashing systems. They can put out an idea long enough to get us to buy into it so we go out and build it for them. But there's no magic in that. It's simply propaganda or brainwashing. We're going to be talking about that here today. But we can build the world we want. Nineveh was going to be destroyed, and it's a great parable, a great allegory to today. It was going to be destroyed within a few weeks, but they listened to God's messenger. They listened to Jonas, who had to go through his own trials, and so they were given a hundred-year reprieve, and it's the same thing. I hope the New World Order doesn't come fully into power because it is going to kill the majority of people on the planet or die trying. It is going to have the rise of the machines, the whole nine yards. You will see it unfold. And I hope that I can struggle as much as I can to resist it coming into place now because if we don't do that, I will assure you when we stand before God and say, hey, I was a Christian, I went to church, God's going to say, you didn't stand up against the New World Order. You didn't stand up for the kids that are shooting full of deadly vaccines. You didn't even stand up to your scumbag mayor in Austin who's putting poison fluoride in the water. I don't know you. That's what's going to happen. Right. God hates a coward. And that's, again, why I salute the people that are here today. Because you are here in defiance of this open, dehumanizing tyranny. So I will say this. Some people hear what I have to say and it's scary and they think, this guy's trying to scare me. No, I'm trying to warn them. Because if there's a pit out your back door and, and you're going to fall and break your leg in it, some 20-foot deep you know, sinkhole that formed the day before. If I come over and tell you, hey, neighbor, there's a sinkhole out back. Watch out you know, when you walk out there to feed your chickens or whatever. I'm not fear-mongering. I'm warning them about something that's happened. If I see my neighbor's house on fire and I come to him and say, hey, uh, I called the fire department. There's flames shooting out of your second story up there. I'm not fear-mongering. I'm doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Basic survival instinct. I want to face a threat with my eyes open. Throughout history, there have been small percentages of people when they're under threat, especially children, who can blame them, who will close their eyes and curl up in a ball. And sometimes that works. Might work with a grizzly bear, but it's not going to work with the New World Order. They want you to curl up in a ball so they can take their time with you. And they'll move on from somebody standing up on their hind legs against them and find somebody that will fall down like a sheep in front of them. We're supposed to be sheep before God and God's edicts, and God then will take care of us. Not sheep before the New World Order and its armies of wolves. 
It's that simple. And so I say to people out there that live in fear, now is the time to open your eyes. The threat is there. Closing your eyes, sticking your head in the sand, does not protect you from those threats. Only facing it. Uh, to paraphrase Patrick Henry, he said, I would know the whole truth and make preparation for it. No matter how bad it is, because the war has already begun, why stand we idly here? The war is going on against all of free humanity and anyone who doesn't want to give up their soul and give up their free will. Because this is a war against free will. 110%. And never forget that. That is the most important thing to understand. Because if they can take your intellect and have you shut down your survival instinct and shut down your connection to your Creator, it's over. You're already dead. They've got you. So my message is to people out there, you should be afraid of not resisting this because your laying down is what is allowing to bring this to fruition. And I love how the cowards sit there and think they're part of the power structure and defend the new world order and defend all the evils as everything we've warned about year after year after year comes true exactly as we break it down. Because the globalists are so arrogant they've told us what they're going to do. All we're doing is telling you what they said they would do and showing you where they said it. Tex earlier was reading Why the Future Doesn't Need Us from like 13 years ago in Wired Magazine, Bill Joy. He goes, I go to a conference of 200 computer company owners, billionaires, and they go, well, do we kill everybody or do we let them play video games all day? And the answer was, kill everybody! That's not fear-mongering to tell you what he wrote in a magazine telling you what they were talking about. That's saying, let's get organized and let's decide to build a good, humane, decent, wholesome culture based on truth and justice, not a culture based on fraud and lies and whoever in the government has the most guns can trample over us and enslave us. Let's have a future based on freedom. And again, I started out here by saluting you and those out there and those that came before us. But you think about, there were books written that I've read and covered on air they were written back in 1898 and stuff about the plan by global European bankers to come in and set up a central bank called a federal bank and how they were going to then bankrupt everybody and take the country into bondage. And Thomas Jefferson talked about it 100 years uh, before that, on and on and on. And it all came true because they were in these meetings. One of these guys was a banker who wrote a book about it. Uh, there's so many examples of this. And then in 1913, you read the congressional record. It's like... You know, Alex Jones and Tex Mars, or Jim Mars was there. It was all about how we were being conquered by a money power. How an outside group would control the issuance of currency and credit and would buy up the planet. And that's what happened. So think about all the people that said they're going to start abolishing sovereignty. They're going to put our military under UN and NATO. Now it's all happened but announced in Congress. They're going to have started breaking up the family and saying that parents uh, aren't the parents. Now MSNBC runs commercials basically saying parenthood is bad. All of this is over the top. So people 60 years ago would see the John Birch Society talk about it and think that's crazy, even though they have the source documents. But now it's all happening. So again, don't expect the world and the new world order and this whole system of sickos to, to go, wow, you were right. Uh, you told the truth. Man, you, here's a Pulitzer Prize. They're going to attack us that much stronger. They are going to intensify these operations tenfold because we are the resistance. We are the people that know. You are the people that have studied this. You are the people because of your family, your upbringing, your connection to God. Whatever reason, we're concerned about this. And you are the leaders. You are the resistance. There's no other you know, room of people out there waiting to fight this. It's us. Look in the mirror. It's up to us to stand against this. And if we will stand up against this, it will fall. But through the process of its, its collapse, it will bring incredible destruction to this planet. But it's going to be much less than the destruction that will come if we completely give in to this evil. So this is a massive time that we've entered, and it's only going to get more intense. 
This is the time people have written about for thousands of years that we're entering right now. And it's only going to get more and more insane, more and more crazy, where reality itself seems like it's been turned on its head. And when the world laughs at you and arrogantly you know, calls for you to be arrested, remember how pathetic these slaves are. How their intellects and souls and minds have been stolen. These are victims who were set in front of the television set from the age you know, of six months drooling in their dirty diapers to be programmed by the one-eyed New World Order system. Their children were given to the fires of Moloch. These are victims, so don't let them laughing at you and even persecuting you make you angry. Thank God that you at least are awake and, and know what's happening. Because your soul and your free will is outside their grasp. You are now above them, you are now outside of their realm. And all we need to do is try to reach into that realm to try to save as many of these people from the New World Order system as we can. And that is our mission. And that is why it's so important that we work tirelessly in this fight. And when we do the right thing and step up and take action, God will aid us and, and doors will open up for us when we're doing the right thing and not living in fear. Break the chains of fear and throw yourself against the new world order and you will see these devils run. So the American patriots were right. We stand on their shoulders and we salute them. Uh, I mean, nowadays people are awake massively to the shadow government, the tyranny, the NSA spying, the government narcotics trafficking, the occultism of the elite. The, the people are awake right now more than they've ever been, and it's only going to intensify. Think about people that labored 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, when if you said the Federal Reserve was private and tried to show people the shareholders, you would be laughed at and called an insane person. Or just five years ago, the New York Times would say, there is no Bilderberg Group. And Alex Jones, they actually wrote this, was in a parking lot in Virginia imagining sedans and helicopters and police, even though we had video of it. They were discrediting themselves, only speaking to their programmed masses who themselves are afraid and know they're being lied to, but cling on to that lie like a life preserver in the North Atlantic from the freezing truth. Think about that. Think about that. They, they buy into the most simple propaganda because it, it makes them feel comfortable. And again, these are pathetic victims. Don't feel bad when, when groups in the crowd or the establishment laugh at you because they are spiritually and culturally blind. They have bought into this culture of death. <laughs> Any form of independence is under attack because it doesn't fit in to this programmed, systematic, robotic system that the Illuminati want to create. Again, that attack on your free will. So that's why when you turn on any sitcom or any major drama or any cop show, the bad guys, or if you go buy the latest military video game, the bad guys are patriot, conservative, libertarian, Christians, returning veterans, anti-Illuminati in the fetters. I'm thinking an M17 or my micro Uzi with a silencer. You ex-military? I don't know. We're better than that. They were both raised by militia. Well, constitutional extremists, to, to be accurate. So any form of independence is seen as an enemy by this tyranny, and that's why we need more independence, food independence, uh, local small churches that aren't under government control, independence, not fighting with your husband or wife, spending more time with your children, explaining to them how the system is corrupt and a threat. They genetically and culturally already know this. From all the instincts God gave us and all the things our ancestors went through, they'll immediately start behaving better if you explain to them that the system wants to prey on them. That's why the system wants to break that parent-child connection, to break that ancient cycle that goes back thousands of years. I want to give a brief history to understand our enemy of the takeover. And there have been many different empires, many different permutations of them, going back to Egypt and Babylon and Greece and the 5,000-plus-year-old empires that came uh, out of China. 
But to boil it all down, the synthesis of those technologies were taken into Rome before the fall of the Roman Empire in 410, the complete fall of it, and was split off into the two Roman Empires, the Byzantine and the old Roman Empire. And if you look at those systems, they were then taken, those systems of cultural control, and taken to Scotland, taken to England, taken to France. And an artificial dark age was actually brought in for more than a thousand years to try to perfect turning humans into cattle. But that failed. And so everything we see now is the system trying to bring in with technology what, what has already been attempted before. Take the French Revolution, uh, really an Illuminati twisted copy of ours, where they tried to go to a nine-day work week, they tried to abolish the seasons, they tried to abolish families, but it didn't work and the French rebelled against it, even though hundreds of thousands were killed. It's the same thing. The, the, the globalists want to try to play God and to do that, they have to get rid of the normal human systems that our Creator gave us. That's why they're at war with the natural, wholesome order that has created all the prosperity that we've ever seen. As soon as you deviate from that, everything collapses, everything unravels. That's a fact. So why are they obsessed with bringing that in? Because they are fundamentally at odds with the creator of this creation. And that's in their own words. And so that's why they hate a healthy, happy family. That's why they hate a healthy, happy marriage. That's why they hate it if you're healthy and want to put additives in the food and GMO and vaccines on record to cripple you so that they can have satisfaction out of your pain and suffering. That's who these people are. That's who they are. That's what they stand for. That's their fruits. You fast forward to the British East India Company founded in and around 1612, Cicero 1612. And this is really the current model we're under now. A private corporate group that the government pays and who is exempt from laws, has diplomatic immunity, and controls armies. And that's what it is, a giant corporate global government that, like a glove, puts the government onto its hand. The government isn't the Iron Fist. The Iron Fist is inside the velvet glove with all its propaganda and all its uh, baloney about how it cares about you. It is within that velvet glove. And so anytime the people rebel against the Iron Fist crushing them, they just remove that soiled glove and put another glove back on. Get rid of Bush, put in Obama. Get rid of Obama, put in the next puppet, Jeb Bush or whoever it is. This is the key to the mystery religions. Going back to Egypt, they would have the so-called you know, priesthood of the, of the dark knowledge and the priesthood of the light knowledge. And they would say, oh, we're bringing balance to everything, but oh, the Pharaoh's God and the priest class was really trying to set themselves up as God. If you want to understand this, again, I just brought brushes here. And so they studied astronomy, and they studied uh, agriculture, and they studied construction. And all of this was valuable information, but not as valuable as the proto-psychology and psychiatry and anthropology and sociology that they wrote down in books of how to control and manipulate fellow humans to make us basically animals that they could program. So if you want to know what the Illuminati is, it's simply ancient technologies of control brought forward into the Roman Empire, brought forward then through the Dark Ages into Europe, and then via infighting between the Catholic Church and the Knights Templars, who had broken off using the technology, to the UK, it becomes the new power axis of the Illuminati, or two different feuding Illuminati arms, Hydras with each other. And again, the devil uses competition within his own systems. So you have competing New World Order organizations using different methodology, but generally the same methodology. And when one develops some new technology, the other immediately steals it and uses it. So you have a form of demonic evolution, hyper evolution, moving forward in these systems and technologies that can then be adopted by other groups. And if a new subgroup rises up, it is then brought into the seat of power or as a power slave. The American empire isn't so much an empire as we are the giant power slave to carry out these programs for the New World Order. But let me go back to this basic synopsis here. In the brief history of their takeover, 
They do this region by region. They try to get people to buy in, to let in a group in, or they militarily come in. So they love to prey on groups that aren't advanced technologically because they can't resist. But if you're more technologically advanced, they'll come in and take over and simply use you in an exploitation phase. And when I bring this up, many of you probably would have read about this in communist doctrine, how once the communist in phase two, once they get a beachhead in the country and they're able to take over its central government, they then go into the exploitation phase of using the capital, the treasure, the ingenuity, the science of the nation to take over the neighboring nation or project power against another country. And then if they need to stage a terror attack uh, or a false flag as a pretext to get that country or group or tribe behind fighting the next tribe, that will be done. And many times in the full spectrum dominance, you will have the globalists funding all the sides so that within the war they've organized from both sides, out of that, you get a impoverishment, a destruction of infrastructure, and the wealth being transferred to the offshore piratical globalist crime syndicate. So again, it's a continual war against any independent wealth, any form of independence that they don't control. The object is to go in and wreck Iraq. The object is to go in and wreck Pakistan. The object is to come to America and deindustrialize us and wreck us. The object is to tell Africa, you can't have air conditioning in your cars because you having a good life hurts the earth. By the way, let me get on this Air Force One jet. See you later. If everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over. It's about having you love your servitude, love the fact that you're supposedly dirty and bad. But, but the people on the red carpet, they're like gods who come down out of the sky on their jet copters or their Air Force One. And the television tells you to worship them and you'd be fulfilled if you were just like them. But you're not because you're just a dirty peasant who's hurting the earth. That's the current corporate globalist, Royal Institute of International Affairs, Council on Foreign Relations model where they come in with their globalist financing out of nothing and basically begin to buy off the infrastructure and leadership uh, of the country from banking to academia to media to uh, cultural icons, the arts. They finance it all with fiat garbage and literally get the world via their giant uh, con artist bubble. Then once they've gotten into the nation, they run into the exploitation phase to then move forward and take over surrounding areas. And then once they've finally done that, they then accelerate the collapse of the country they've totally sucked dry and then pose as saviors as they collapse the country. They then pose as saviors having the people transfer their wealth, their energy, everything they've got to them just to be part of the inner circle culturally that doesn't go down with the ship. So then they're able to knock out the nouveau riche, the new wealth, uh, the people that were independently intelligent and successful that they weren't able to shut down through rigged taxation and, and, and uh, you know, insider deals. They then get that group to fully get on board with them and the globalists then tend to move to the next country or next area of exploitation. They will go to the strongest area that has the most wealth, the strongest people, the most warlike people to then gear that country up for war and economic warfare to take over the next nation. If they invade or take over a country just for its resources, but the people are already very, very poor and don't have anything that they can exploit, they exterminate them. They hire the neighboring tribe to kill them, or they cut off the resources. And then, while the UN troops are machine gunning and burning and killing in mass graves, it always comes out later, they're on TV with all the supermodels saying, give us money and we'll help all these starving Africans over here. They won't tell you, by the way, our UN-backed guerrilla force just drove these people out of their ancestral area uh, uh, into this mountainous desert region, and they're all starving to death now because we just drove a million of them into the desert. No, they sit there and get housewives and, 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 and men and, and a, a community groups to send them money to sit there and help the little kids being eaten by a buzzer. Oh, look, this vulture is eating a little kid. Send us money. And then it comes out. Don't help that kid. Move on.
Just like it comes out with Red Cross, United Way, almost none of the money when there's a disaster goes to anything but more advertising to get more money. Because it's not just that they're greedy, they don't want to help you. They want you bankrupt. They want you on your knees because that's what gives them more power. The weaker you are, the stronger they are. That's how their sick brains work. And again, this is scary stuff. But if you study this, this is the reality of what these people have done over and over again. And it's the understanding of how bad these globalists are that will allow us to have a chance to turn this around. They come in, take over the government, establish a system where they're exempt from the laws, they have diplomatic immunity, and they can issue the currency and credit and basically buy up the world for absolutely nothing. Once that's in place, they then take over the country incrementally because now they have an unfair trade advantage. They set up a secret police to be able to oppress the population because they know that people who have studied history are going to recognize the signs and try to block it. They're going to say it doesn't exist and people that talk about it are crazy. But once it's established, as we're now seeing, it come to about 80% fruition, okay, there is a world government, but it's all being done for your own good. And also within this ancient system of the Illuminati, they like to set up their own cities or small country sub-districts that are exempt and above the law. And you look at the District of Columbia uh, in the last hundred years or so operating as its own above the law district and the members of Congress exempting themselves from the law. Going back 400 years or more, you look at England and the city of London within London, the financial district, above the law. Uh, unable to be taxed because that's the deal they have with the crown who they put in power. You look at the Vatican, its own city that gets power from Rome and for 50 years has refused to pay their power bill and no one can force them to pay it because they're sovereign. And not only does sovereign mean to these people that you can't tell me what to do, you're going to give me free power as a tax on top of the public, just like the $85 billion a month we're forced to give to foreign offshore banks. And when Congress under QE3 asks who's getting it, they're told by the president to basically go to hell. You see how all of this is going on while we're busy fighting with each other over all these issues they throw out. They are just looting and robbing the entire world. So I wanted to list some of the programs. Uh, you can look at Israel set up above the law, uh, outside of the United Nations program that some of Israel's supporters helped establish so that people can then be above the law who commit crimes worldwide and go there. Uh, you look at the United Nations, the mother of all of it, set up by the Rockefellers, above the law, diplomatic immunity, can go around murdering whoever they want worldwide. And there are so many other examples of this that you'll see of these artificial command bases that Global has set up inside countries, inside regions, to then launch their operations against free humanity and then run back into these organizations so that the public cannot rally against them and resist them. This is basically what's happening and it's just a form of sophisticated gangsterism where the gangsters have the technology of human control and social engineering on their side. But once we open source this information to good people out there to understand these programs, then it becomes game over for the parasites. And as things get worse and worse underneath this parasitical system, the people that have been lazy or dumbed down who don't want to learn about what's happening are going to be forced to learn what's happened. And so as the globalists try to carry out all these crimes against humanity, we're going to be here exposing them every step of the way. They're not going to do this in a vacuum. You can resist tyranny now. It's so robotic and their slaves are so robotic and so dumbed down that they don't even see you when you're out there resisting them or exposing them or sabotaging them politically. So it cuts both ways. They've dumbed down the public and put them in a trance state so they can control them. Well, imagine what we can do against the New World Order in resistance when their people have never had any human contact. People, you know, the general zombie thinks it's really cool to not care about anybody but themselves. Imagine when you actually try to give someone human contact. In many cases, it will have them open up and awaken. I've got a friend who likes to, he's a, he's a mailman, and he likes to visit nursing homes that God put on his heart about a decade ago. And he said, he'll go into these nursing homes, these people can't even talk. 
And the nursing homes will say, hey, leave them alone. They don't talk. And with a, a few visits, these people are awake. These people are excited. These people are talking. He comes back and visits them the next time. And they're in a suit and tie, you know, ready to, you know, get taken down to a restaurant to eat some food. And a lot of times, then the nursing home says, stop coming and visiting them with your wife. We don't want the trouble of having these people running around here. But see, it's the same thing for the general public. It's the exact same thing. They, we are like those people in a nursing home that nobody's given attention to. And if you go out and give people attention, and if you spread the word, you will see that humanity begin to shine back through them. And that's the goal we all have. You want to help somebody? It might mean going once a week and bringing people cookies in a nursing home or taking your dog in to see them. It might mean helping your neighbor move. It might mean uh, you know, simply doing the right thing. Being good is what these people hate because it hurts them. That's what stands up against them is just doing little good things, being good again. Good people standing up and taking action will drive these globalists out. Look at America, not perfect, and they certainly demonized it because they don't like the basic ideas that are there that scare these tyrants so much. But if you look at the U.S., real estate-wise, not that big of a country. I know they put it big on the maps, but if you look at a world map that's proportionate and actually shows how big the U.S. is, it's, it's, it's a, a medium-sized country. And the arable resources and things aren't even you know, that good compared to something like uh, Western Europe in many cases. But why did the United States become the most successful nation in the world? Why did the United States have the highest education standards in the world, the most inventions, the uh, longest lived in many regions of the country? We were number one in basically almost everything until about the 19. 50s or so. And then the long decline started there because of the incredible trust of the social engineers. So as soon as we left the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Christian ideals, the Puritan, Puritanical ideas that were established here in this country, even though they were never fully implemented, just that idea made us the most wealthy country in the world. And that's why the New World Order globalists came here and began to take it over because they saw that engine. Anywhere the globalists get control, you get the lowest IQs, the lowest education, the most unhealthy people, the highest rates of cancer. You get all of the curses of living under the tyranny. And it's not some magical curse. It's the curse of having horrible control freak murderers in control of the nation who will go out and poison your food because they like to see you stumbling around sick, not knowing what hit you, and your good heart can't imagine that somebody would do something like that to you. It's time to realize who these people are and the crimes they've committed and set a fire, the brush fires of liberty everywhere to bring this scum to justice. So we know, we know the new world order is bad, even if somebody didn't believe in God. Hey, you don't want to believe in this new world order and all this fake, sicky, sweet package trendiness because just like a fishing lure, it looks like a big old juicy minnow. It looks like a big old juicy purple worm to a bass. It's not. It's artificial and it's got barbs in it. Right. And that's what this new world order is. It's dangled out there like it looks pretty, like it looks tasty, it looks delicious, it looks fun, it's going to be wonderful, but you bite into it, it's got big old treble hooks in it. Right. And that's what we got to point out to people. Do you like the fruits of the new world order? Because let me tell you, if you like the way things are going now, if you like autism from 1 in 30,000 to 1 in 50 now, the last 20 years, if you like cancer rates in children up over 10,000 percent, if you like diabetes up several thousand percent, if you like breast cancer up 3,000 percent, if you like IQs dropping 20-something percent, if you like going from the greatest saving nation in the world to the greatest debtor nation in the world overnight, if you like that, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because if you like Stalin, Hitler, Mao, and all the other mass murderers of history, get ready, because that's what you're going to get real soon if this train keeps on pulling into the station. We want to turn this new world order around right now. We know where it goes. We don't like what comes out of the other end of it. We don't like what this tree grows. Cut that tree down and burn it. That's what we need to do. We need to cut the new world order down and burn it. 
and burn its seeds and get rid of it forever. Because these people are a curse on humanity. They just learn how perception works. They learn tricks. They learn semantical games. But hey, when you know something's producing bad, it doesn't matter if it's smiling at you. You need to get rid of it. And it's that simple. We don't want the New World Order. We don't want globalism. We don't want collectivism. We know it's bad. We know it doesn't work. And we want to see it be destroyed. Yeah. And we destroy it by withdrawing our consent from it. By voting with our dollars, by supporting local groups, by supporting organic groups, by supporting churches that tell the truth, by withdrawing your consent every way you can from this system, you will defeat it. And by verbally exposing it with our committees of correspondence, just as our forebearers did, listing their crimes, showing their crimes. They spent all day on TV and billboards and press talking about how bad the citizens are and how bad the people are and how, how there's all these drugs out there and how the terrorists are out there. The government's on record now running the terrorists. The government's on record shipping in the narcotics. And just keep hammering that. You're the bad guys. Stop acting like you're the good guys. All you're going to do is help this evil fully manifest itself the longer you live in denial. And so many people that defend the system now, they don't defend it out of feeling like they're part of the power structure anymore. In the past, they would defend it because they felt like they were part of the system and they're winners. Now they defend it out of fear. And that's a big victory we've had. We've gone from having them be willing participants in the destruction of humanity to now being scared prisoners within the system. And now they're one step closer to a jailbreak. You see, we're winning. Congress has a 9% approval rating, a 10% approval rating. Main Street Media is imploding. Obama lost 17% in a Gallup poll of his uh, useful idiot under 30s. And you look at every other number. Liberty is becoming popular. Tyranny is becoming unpopular. So they'll send in their operatives to pose as liberty lovers, to pose as liberty leaders, to then do nothing but cause infighting and to criticize other people that are fighting the New World Order. And they'll do it by name, just like Cass Sunstein at the White House said, to sow dissension. Don't be involved in dissension, nitpicking, backstabbing, seeing who could do a better job, or I like this guy, or I like that guy. You get out there, and you be leaders, and you fight tyranny, and we'll focus on the New World Order, and the Federal Reserve, and the Rothschilds, and the Rockefellers, and the Queen of England, and we will expose them. And then after we've dealt with them, then we can debate who we support and who we like. But we sure know we don't like the people that are running this planet right now. Yeah. These people... The cutting edge of the New World Order, they call themselves progressives. Many of them useful idiots who really have drunk the Kool-Aid. They really think that they are progressive, that they are progressing. While Obama goes, shouldn't have light bulbs, shouldn't have air conditioning, shouldn't have a good way of life. It's bad for the earth. While the globalists are destroying the earth with the GMO and all the rest of it trying to play God. It's so hollow. But still the idea, you're bad. It's cool for you to have less. While the bankers that are financing all this give themselves, you know, $5 billion bonuses a year. I mean, I would start to believe them, even if the science is a fraud, we know they're lying, if Obama didn't have air conditioning and uh, all these globalists sold everything they had and walked around in sackcloth, but they don't. They just build bigger and bigger palaces. They just take more and more species and splice them together that we know is hurting the earth because they hate God's creation. And everything they do is to try to kill, steal, and destroy. If you weren't a Bible-believing Christian before, you better be now because everything these people are doing, they read Revelations and use it as an instruction manual. They read 1984 and use it as an instruction manual. So whether, whether the Bible's real or not, I know it's real. The issue is, it doesn't matter. Because these people, if there's a devil, they fit the bill. I mean, there's the devil right there. It's the New World Order. And the more I study it, the more I look at it, and all its intricacies and the spirit of it that animates all its systems, it is an animating force of evil. There is an animating force giving power unto this. But we have the God of the universe animating us. And all we've got to do is ask God to use us as vessels against this tyranny. Amen. 
and to not fear the new world order that can kill our body, but God that can damn us to hell forever. So at its core, it is a satanic conspiracy at war with all of God's creations. And it is at war with real progress. All the good things that come out of a free and open society where people are virtuous and stand up, the New World Order doesn't like that because you get a little bit uppity when you're doing well and you don't want to serve the system. It wants to be able to give you everything you've got so that you will conform with what it believes. Towards the end of establishing a world technotronic global government on, the, on record that plans to kill us all with bioweapons so the globalists can go crawl into their underground bunkers and come back out and inherit the life extension technologies and the nanotech and all the rest of it. And I say to these people, just as Texan did his speech, do you really think the new world order, the, the, the god of this world, the power of this world, is, is, is going to give you all these things when its whole desire is to destroy creation itself out of the absolute hate of life? Do you really think you're ever going to taste any of this? The answer is you're not going to taste any of it. You have been completely conned. And a lot of these people that serve the New World Order, because I've talked to them off record, they know that, but they're so scared, they feel like they've gone so far, they're just going to try to enjoy what they've got here, living in this life, before it all gets pushed over the edge, and that's why they're clamoring for the life extension technologies, and so greedy and angry at all of us, the peasants eating their food, and using their resources, because they were given this world, they stole this world, and we're like weevils in in the pantry eating their grain. Right. They want us out of the way. Well, you know what? They're the ones that started the fight. I want them out of the way. Yeah. And we're going to do that not through covert weapons and the food and the water and the culture. We're going to do that openly with the truth that trumps all of their lives. And we're going to take our culture and society back. And the globalists can go stay with each other like a bunch of zombies on some island and tear each other apart. Amen. Because vampires can't feed off vampires. And I'm sick of these vampires and all their propaganda. I want to see them driven into the sea. The ultimate power trip is what I call Ray Kurzweil. He said in his latest book, he said, I don't believe in God yet, but I intend to become the first God. And then he's going to bring his father back, too. And, and I saw him in this documentary saying the same stuff that was in his book, staring at photos of his dad and his dad's papers, going, I'm, I'm going to resurrect him with this. It was kind of sad to see, here's this high priest of the Illuminati who actually is believing all this, and, and I'm going to bring my dad back. I, I love him. I, I, uh, that's like saying the sands at the Sahara Desert would put a wristwatch together. The old thing of saying evolution, supposedly, uh, you, know, you know, came from some amino acids in the Pacific Ocean or something billions of years ago. It is so ridiculous to watch these people and to realize how cut off they are from God's creation. And it, 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 it's so sad. So all they know, like a person buried alive, is to froth and try to dig their way out. And they see us as the soil that's on top of them. They believe that God's creation and people trying to be good and decent and honorable is what's holding them up. They believe if we just get out of the way, their utopia could come into view. Take the Earth First Battalion, where they were saying, we are the white horse. We will bring judgment on the world. Humanity is bad. We need to kill everybody. And they call it liberal and have guys in the movie with flowers in their hair. When it's the complete opposite. They have this trendy, fake affectation on the surface, but that is nothing but camouflage with these people. All they know is, I am going to kill people. That's the ultimate thrill to them. And they don't want to kill bad people that are hurting innocents. They want to kill anyone who is not going along with their system. Because you're like a big, bright, white light in the dark to them, and they want to extinguish you. That's why these two things aren't going to ever mix together. They tell you live in harmony with them. That just means you need to submit to them. 
You need to turn yourself over to them. They're never going to compromise with us. We don't give up something and they give up something. We give up something, we give up something, we give up something until we fall off the cliff. That's what's happening here. But then you look at the architecture of the technology the New World Order has been putting in place. All of it dehumanizes. All of it has back doors to spy on us. All of it, when it could have a good use, has been twisted to try to dominate us and lower our IQs and lower our perception, lower our horizons. Because this is a system that has a God at the head of it that is inherently wicked. There's no making a deal with this devil. In a culture that's in a deep sleep, in a culture that is in a deep coma, that is the only thing that is going to wake them up, is being loud, is being aggressive. Yeah. The system's always, be calm, be nice, that's how you're credible. But notice, they're not calm and nice. That's right. they, they, they're invading countries, they're killing millions, they're brutalizing you. You ask a question of one of their brainwashed police, not all of them, but the ones they brainwash, they'll taser you. Was that polite? Was that how you got things done? So I'm not saying be violent. I'm saying be aggressive with these people. And I don't do it on purpose and I go on Piers Morgan or, or BBC television and start yelling at these people. But when they sit there and lie and go, there's nothing in the water to hurt you. And I've got over a thousand studies, 24 studies from Harvard last year alone of massive IQ reduction, massive increases in cancer. I get mad and say, how dare you say I'm a liar about poison in the water? I want it out of there. We're not going to get that out of there that they put in there to dumb us down so they have an unfair advantage against us, like drugging the other guy you're about to box. It's the same thing. These people should be executed after a trial by jury for putting that in the water. We shouldn't, oh, Alex, don't raise your voice to them. Paul Revere rode around on a horse saying, get your guns, get ready to start killing people. And we're like, well, that's Paul Revere. We salute him. But you know, that Alex Jones, he raised his voice once. That's wrong. And again, I'm not calling for going out and shooting people because we're peacefully winning this fight. And we are going to turn this around. But if there are foreign armies marching in to take us to FEMA camps, we don't have a right. We have a duty to resist it. And that's what the Second Amendment is there for. But we're losing if we have to go to that. And, and then we may win if that happens, but that's not where we want to go. They want to go there. They're pushing for that. We want to maintain a peaceful stance as long as we can. And then if we are offensively attacked, we have a right and a duty to resist it. You have to choose that situation. If you're all alone, they're going to spin the story. You don't have any way to get the truth out. You, you've got to defend yourself. If I'm in public, the new order is going to kill me. I'll let them kill me. Because I want everybody to see that, to see who the bad guy is. So you have to choose your battles. But the bottom line is, this is an epic time that we're in. This is the most historic time in all of human development that we are now entering. And I don't want to ever hear people out there that are watching say, oh, I'm bored, or there's nothing going on, or there's nothing on TV. The greatest show on earth is going on outside your television. It's called reality. And we're on a planet hurtling through space, dealing with satanic forces that want to try to override humanity and bring in the reign of machines that they believe they're going to merge with and they're openly saying they plan to take all our jobs away, make us dependent to socially engineer us as a means towards getting the handcuffs on us politically and economically and militarily so they can execute us. Now, you'd be insane to not resist that. Amen. You'd be crazy to try to sell out to it believing this crazy plan is actually going to work even if you were evil. This flies in the face of everything we've ever been. And if we let this evil win, we sell out all of our ancestors that stood against tyranny and that, and that taught us what was right and that brought humanity and culture forward. So what we're doing is bigger than just our lives today. It's about our ancestors. It's about those of us today. It's about our children and their grandchildren and the continuum that is humanity. And when you realize that, there's no fear anymore. We can't turn our world and our society over to a bunch of inbred, degenerate devil worshippers. It is our job to stand up and awaken and awaken others and resist the new world order until the end. Bottom line, listen.
liberty is rising, humanity is rising. This is our generation's great test. And I'm here to tell you, this is a special generation. Everyone who's alive right now, the last three generations of the generation being born now, we are at the beginning, the crossroads, the jump point, the event horizon of the most important time in all of creation. You got front row seats to incredible science fiction that you're living. And you're not just in the seats. You're in the arena whether you know it or not. So take your destiny to be leaders. Stand against the new world order. Stand with your ancestors. And most importantly, stand with God for life, truth, and justice. Fearlessly resisting the tyrants and their father, the devil. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.